Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch Your Track Podcast presented by the Dude and Grim Show and co-produced by Mr. I-V-E-S-D. I am the Dude. And I am Grim. And today, we are going away with the devil and saying, get behind me, Satan. By the white stripes. Hold it up, dude. Ooh. Nice looking, nice looking record. I, I was, I've been a fan of that. I think that's probably the coolest cover of any of their yeah, albums. It's awesome. I love how the apple is white. Yes, I'm a big fan of that. That too. is, I like uh, yeah. There's just like something kind of weird about that, but I think it's cool. Yes, and I must say, the reason that I own this on vinyl is because of you. So thank you. Merry Christmas, Christmas dude. The dude. Merry Christmas. Christmas is good to the you filthy animal. I was yeah. thinking about going out and getting that myself because as we talked about doing this one, it did occur to me that this is my favorite White Stripes album. And okay. shout out to you, dude, because, uh, I mean, you were, um, I'd say, the out of our kind of friend group, the one who was most into the White Stripes. So I remember when you got nice. this, we listened to it quite dude. heavily that yeah, summer. I started. Yeah, I remember because uh, I had heard – you know, like Seven Nation Army and some of that stuff. But I went to the store and I was like, okay, I'm not going to get Elephant. And I went and I got, I just randomly got Dish Still. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And, um, you know, uh, it just had a bunch of like good little songs on it that didn't sound, a lot of them didn't, didn't sound anything like Seven Nation Army. So I was really surprised at sort of um, the variety of of sounds and stuff. And then, you know, then Elephant, I did get that album and that is uh, compared to this album, they're they're very different. Yeah, and, they are. Jack White, you know, they talked about it, like how he really, you know, not not only, I mean, instrumentally, really took this Explore album the in a space. complete, complete different direction, um, which which I thought was cool, man. Yeah, um, I agree. You know, when you, when you think of the White Stripes, you think of like these like real raw, nasty, grungy, blues, yeah. heavy. Heavy guitar, a lot of just fuzz and everything, mm-hmm. right? And this and, is and, not and that. This, it, yeah, it, it has, a, you know, it, they sprinkle some of it in, yep. but that's not the the overall feel of the album. Well, and I like how they sprinkle some of it in, not just in the sense like there's a couple songs like that. Like, first, it, what comes to mind is The Nurse, where there's literally just hits every once in a while, just be like, doo, doo, doo. Yeah, and then dude, you right? know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of cool. Like you, you, that's just so abnormal. You do yeah. not hear that just in in for for most bands. Uh, and yeah, I thought, that, dude, it's it's it was pretty cool, man. I I think cool. that's what I liked most about it. And I mean, he had played the uh, Rhodes piano a little bit and some other stuff, but this song is very heavy on acoustic pianos. It was almost as like he oh hadn't my gosh, huge. He hadn't had one before, and then somebody, you know, like he got a hold of one. Was like, I am really going to yeah. capitalize on this. Well, and, and the one thing I noticed too, though, is almost kind of like how you say that. It's like somebody gave it to him for the first time because the way he plays the piano on a lot of these songs, it's not, you know, it's not like listening to like Elton John or Billy. No, or it is. Who, it is who, not who plays the piano in a song. It's it like he uses like almost as riffs or like accentuates and yeah it like hits parts and stuff like that it's well not just and the, like the song piano part yeah and even the songs where he plays it i mean in it's funny because we don't think of it like this but by definition the piano is actually a percussion instrument and he does play it very percussively um sure and and i and i don't i don't know i think the um for some reason, innocence is the word that comes to mind because I think that he's used that term when talking about Meg's drumming, almost like approached with a childlike innocence. And I feel like the yeah. piano playing in this is is approached in a very similar way too. It's sure. certainly not trying to be flashy, um, just hitting the right notes when it needs to. And yeah, yeah, I I think that's a great way to uh, to sort of explain it. Um, you know, one thing I didn't realize when I was, when I was kind of researching this album a little bit is, is how much like the, uh, I guess the idea and theme of like Rita Hayworth. Oh, I've, I've always realized that because dude, in Um, take, 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 there's like a whole verse about her. 
Right. Yes. I, I, I get that. And, and I always knew Rita. I, I guess because uh, he said is is it in take, take, take where he says Rita. I saw Rita, Rita Hayworth Rita. there. OK. Yeah. I, yeah in I a place so okay. seedy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I didn't realize that sort of the idea of her and her career sort of um, kind of played a theme throughout the, the whole album. I didn't realize that either. And I didn't realize that she was actually. um of Latina Hispanic, background, right? yeah, yeah. And, right. and she changed her last name to get rid of that. That that was yeah. very interesting to. Well, I think you know, and that's one thing I you know a fair number of of movie stars and actors have have done. Um, I'm trying to think some of that come to mind. Like I think I think Brad Pitt might have changed his name. I'm not sure. Oh yeah. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio might have as well, and. Emma Stone. I'm pretty sure she changed her name. Um, I'm not sure if any musicians have, but I'm Bob I'm sure Dylan. There's a handful of Bob Dylan. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Robert Zimmerman. Dang. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. But other than yeah. that, yeah, <laughs> Saint Vincent. Yeah, that. That's not her birth name. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, but um, you know, also since we are sort of kind of fans of vinyl here as you know owning this it when this album came out i found it really interesting that they didn't re, you know they didn't release it on vinyl yeah they just kind of they they kind of left it which up to that point they had released all their albums on vinyl i'm, I'm not exactly and that's sure why i just don't was. understand why this one and even when they did why it was cut up the way it was because if you're gonna change the order of the tracks you could have changed it even just as slight as you did and still fit it on a single vinyl. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the thought process is, but yes, they did switch um, little ghost and as ugly as I seem those, if you get it on vinyl, they, they swapped them on the vinyl. Um, so if you're used to hearing it on CD, uh, that transition will, will not be the same for you. Um, but yeah, I, I know how you're, you know, you're saying, yeah, you could fit it on, on one disc um, but that's Good. that's one of the weird things about, um, you know, music now, or at least at least the time period where CD was the dominant format. Yeah. Right? And things yeah, were yeah, made yeah. for CD. And then you kind of switch it over to, to vinyl. It's like, ah, how do you fit it? And we got to move songs around a little bit and everything yeah. just to make things fit. And I don't know, it's kind of weird. Just like we were talking about uh, Modest Mouse, right? With uh, oh, uh, yeah. Lonesome Crowd, Lonesome Crowd, Lonesome Crowd West. West. So here's the thing, though. I just looked at it today. They moved lounge closing time and they put whatever blue suede sedan. Mm, is that, baby is that blue the song? Yeah. Yeah. Baby blue sedan. Uh, I was going to say blue suede shoes, but, um, but my version of lounge closing time on my disc is the full version. See, it's now I need to listen to that. I don't, I don't know if mine is or not. Um, yeah. So, cause I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm more okay with them moving a song than, than cutting I am, like, it out, tr- truncating it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so that I can handle. But yep. anyways, the white stripes. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so I will say um, I read that this in 2006, the book was included in, in the version of a thousand and one albums to hear before you die. Yes. And then. But it was removed it in 2007. And I'm like. I'm sorry. Died. Did like 500 amazing albums come out, and you know, in the past year, I, I'm you sorry if you're putting a thousand albums on that list. I think this should probably be one of them. Yeah, I'm, 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 <clears throat> that's I can't it would be of my that. opinion. But I, I see it, um, and probably precisely for the reasons that we're citing that we like it, but. I, as you look at, some people gave it really high rankings, but most of them didn't. It's like a solid B or a C plus ish if you were looking at like your grades in school kind of yes. weighted scale. I was doing 3.0. I was hovering. So Yeah, yeah. Ah. I was like, why get a 4.0 when you can study kind of like half as much and get a 3? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just didn't make sense to me, man. Yeah. So, um, but so I think there is a part of me that understands and maybe upon, you know, first listens for, you know, this doesn't have the, sort of the songs that 
you know, people were used to hearing, especially what Elephant was probably the album before this, I imagine. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it was, Um, you know, coming off that. I can see why people are just like maybe I wouldn't say put off by it, but maybe caught off guard a little bit. Yeah, I still think. um, Yeah, I can I can see that. And there's there's bands where I maybe it's just they didn't like that direction, but I thought it worked for them. Because they they've hinted at it in songs for a long time. I mean, sure, I've it, I've yeah. always been a big fan of. It's true that we love one another, but that's real acoustic and kind of you know light percussion. And well, that's the thing they'll do. Um, you know, so, like if you look at a lot of, a lot of their hits and stuff, kind of do have a similar sort of sound. They yeah. are more of the rock songs and and whatnot. Um, but on most of their albums, they do have a couple songs that are, I don't know, you just call them more fun songs, mm-hmm. right? A little more silly, silly yeah. and goofy and just, you know, they don't take themselves as, you know, as, as serious. So, and I think this song or this album definitely has, has a few of those songs. Mm-hmm. And I think we, we will, we will get to them. Now, uh, there was something else that I had to, add. oh, so since, there still is like a third man place in Detroit, but I think his main deal is in Nashville now, isn't it? I think he pretty much is. But yeah. I think at this I, point he was still everything was still centered in Detroit because I know there's still a third man records in Detroit, mm-hmm. but I don't know if there's a studio. And it's cool because in the store you can like you go in there and dude, they like you can see all the pressing being done in the back. It's 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 all dude, glass walls. Oh. It's really cool. That's cool. I like that. Yeah. I like that. But anyways, um, yeah, I just I think that's cool because it was still, you know, very much like the Detroit kind of, you know, detail Detroit lives kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, too. The working man, the blue collar. Good stuff. Um, Speaking of blue, should we get into the tracks? Yeah, I guess we should. And and maybe before we do, this is probably as good a time as any if you haven't already. I mean, hook it up and go ahead and... Like, subscribe, and comment below. Just a friendly reminder. Mm-hmm. And also, if you'd like Get Behind Me Satan, we did a uh, Scratch Track episode on Elephant last year. So yeah, you might like that, that as well. Oh, I do have to say, I, I do, and I assumed that this was where the title came from, but... Um, it was cool reading that it came from the, the New Bible. Testament, basically. And that's why it's kind of um, well-timed for us, because I believe that the that the um, the actual quote, which was, get thee behind me, Satan, um, it says it was from the, the in Matthew in the New Testament, but it was uh, something that Jesus said when he was fasting in the desert during Lent, which happens to be right now, if you... Uh, still go to church i don't but i i know that just because it's before easter and after fat tuesday <laughs> so somewhere a sandwich in the middle yeah 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 all right good deal but i like the, right, the title the title's really it's cool it is it is very cool very cool so track number one grim blue, blue orchid. orchid which i believe was the first single, single the yeah album, I mean. now this one right. tricks you i think because if you hadn't heard anything of the album and you heard this song first, you would think, oh, this is just kind of another iteration of like the White Stripes mm-hmm. doing what the White Stripes do. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's almost like a, I don't know, a tease a little bit. Yeah. Do they kind of, you know, fake you out. So, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> but I do. I love the way the song starts. It, almost, it sounds like a... Um, Almost like a motorcycle in the beginning. Well, do, 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 do. what what is that? Do you oh, know? I I think it's just like drums, um, like okay. drums hitting hitting in quick succession. Okay, okay, that um, makes sense. Yeah. But one thing that's interesting, and you said a motorcycle, which um, that wasn't the sound I had in mind, but I was thinking for a second you were talking about the guitar. The guitar has a very distinct sound because I think that he's. To, to get some of that thickness is he's playing yeah. the regular riff and then you have your regular signal out that's just the guitar and you probably split that and then one's going into like a double octave thing so you're getting an octave higher and an octave lower so the same riff is like filling out all the registers because the higher one 
sounds like an Elvin the Chipmunks guitar. You know what I mean? It just, it just yeah. sounds kind of goofy like that. And then you got the I low end too. So I, I oh, and dude. he, I think that he's done that um, on a lot of things and continues to kind of use that effect, which makes sense if you didn't have a bass player. Yeah, it, it, and I was I'm glad you had all that information because that that guitar sound, uh, you know, the dent, nah, mm-hmm. nah, nah, like. Dude, I don't know if I've heard like that sound really like that. I'm just trying to think like it just it has this it has this cleanliness to it, but it's still really rough. I don't know. There's there's just something something about it, man, that just um, yeah, like it it just it just sounded it sounds really good, man. It's a great just kind of riff to open the album up. Yeah, it is. It is a distinct, distinct sound. I, I will say that. So they tricked everyone into thinking that, uh, yeah, it was going to be a real balls to the wall, like hardcore <laughs> in, your, in your face album. Yep. right? And, you know, maybe not. Maybe not. Because we get because. to maybe not my favorite, but man, right up there. The nurse. The nurse. I Dude, just love, like, love the marimba on it. It, it just. I was going to say, Dude. All the alternate percussion yeah, on this album, I and know. then you got you know just the um the uh, well, I guess you call what acoustic piano the piano just yeah. you know it's dude it just uh man it sounds it sounds really good but then dude there's those like hits sort of sne- <laughs> yeah those punches right yeah <laughs> so so the way I kind of describe it in a bunch of the, I did it in my notes I'm like there's all these punches and like little jabs like yeah. in, in songs sometimes and the way they do it with this is they got it's the Basically the the dr- it's like a I think it's like a drum kick and like a guitar um, scratch like at the same time and it's just like yeah they just like just a quick you know, power it's chord and, and everything yeah yeah, yeah. It's and sometimes really, it's, it's really just one man. hit and sometimes they'll hit it like yeah. four or five times yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I think it's bunch of them. I think it's cool yeah. like it's dude it's never heard anything like it <laughs> I I agree with that and I think it's almost like for the people who you know weren't you know when they heard this song and they threw out their own what the fuck is that yeah i think for them it was probably like the white stars being like just just stick with this like it's we're not done with this this bit yet you know so exactly um and now Grant, i like the lyrics too the nurse should not be the one who puts salt in your wound. And dude, the best one, it's always with trust that the poison is fed with a spoon. That is a very good line. Dude, that is good. Yeah. Anyways. Good lines. One of your favorites. It is. I don't know. Doorbell. I don't know how they didn't start this with like a doorbell sample. Like dude, that would have been pretty cool. I know. Right? I think it would have yeah. been too. I've been thinking about my doorbell. <laughs> it's just so funny. Man. It is. It like, is. I, 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 I would love to see him play this live. Like that would be hilarious. Like, oh, you it. never? It, um, there's no videos of it or anything. I don't. I mean, not that I've looked or seen. I have, have you seen live. them live? I've seen Jack White live. I've not seen them live. Oh, uh, interesting. I did not either. Yes, yes. Um, it would be great if you know they just went on tour again. But I don't know, dude. There's a part of me that's like Jack White's probably just like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna. I just dyed my hair blue. It doesn't match the color scheme <laughs> of true. you know the white stripes. So probably not. And dude, Meg White, I think, is completely off grid, reclusive, like definitely not basking in the fame that she had garnered from being in the White Stripes. She did. She didn't go and join a super group. No, <laughs> no, she did not. <laughs> no, no, that would have been sweet. Uh, like, dude, Meg White on drums, <laughs> Neil Young on lead guitar, doing those solos that are like. Ee! <laughs> you know, like, dude, oh. there were some calls. She had yeah, dude, yeah. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of want to make the make this super group of like the most marginal instrumentalist at every instrument, and that's the super group. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. We got to think about who that would be. Yeah, just right. just think of well. Neil Young's Southern Man solo. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Young, I, we can't. I mean, he's an amazing musician. He I is, yeah, but I, yeah. that's why but, I put him as lead guitarist. Yeah, because he okay, only plays the solos. Okay, that's fair. <clears throat> um, 
All right. So, do we move on to the next one? Yeah. I don't even even know if we talked about my doorbell, but it's just it's a great song. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways. When are you gonna yeah. ring it? When are you gonna ring it? Yeah. All right. Forever for her. Parens is over for I, me. Close parens. First, first time the piano's really coming in. Oh, I guess it's on my doorbell but, too, but not yeah. like this. Well, it's on the it's in the nurse too. Is it? Pretty sure. Oh, Pretty sure. Could be okay. Pretty sure. Yeah. But anyways, piano. I think there's marimba again in this song, yeah, right, dude? It's um, it's such a my my favorite thing too. I think he he's. I've always thought he was a really clever lyricist, but uh. The lyrics in this song I find to be really c- clever in the way that they're structured. Like, I blew it, and if I knew what to and do, I then I'd do it. it. Like, it's, it's just the point that I'll have, I'll get to it. Like, it, it's it's yeah. very, I the, the structure is very pleasing to listen to. I, I like it. Well, it, it, and the thing <clears throat> is, too, is I, I guess you would say that you know, Jack White, when you think of Jack White, you think of, you know, amazing. You would just probably just say amazing musician, but you think of him as a guitar yeah. player, as a producer. <clears throat> I don't typically think of him like, wow, great vocalist. Yeah. But he but one, his his voice fits his music. But the cool thing is, is he changes it up a lot. Yes, he like, does. It sounds so different, you know, and you, you get the full like variety on well, this album. just think about this song and my doorbell i mean back to back i mean very different can't change that yeah 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 don't yeah. want to all right all right and now we're gonna move on to one of my favorite tracks another favorite <sighs> track of mine ghost, dude, dude little ghost love the mandolin right. in it yeah, that gives it dude right totally oh, different it's- feel it's so good, dude. It's like this old English, like yeah. folky jig. Like, I am. oh man, it's 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 just so unique. And like if if you played again, you play Blue Orchid, <laughs> and then you play Little Ghost, you you'd be like, yeah, those songs don't belong in the same album together, but they do. Yeah, yes, they so, do. It's it's a very unique song, um, and I'm I sure. could see a lot of people who were like early hardcore White Stripes fan. This may be their scratch. Um, yes, not mine. It's not mine. Not mine. Nope. I know nope. you thought it was going to be this one. Yeah, I thought it was a possibility. Yeah. Well, because dude, even back in the day, like here's the thing: we used to both kind of make fun of this song, but I think we've really grown to appreciate. Oh it yeah, too. I I used to you make know. fun of my doorbell too. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like, but oh, it, it okay. is, the, yeah, there's there's something, they're just like fun. And they remind you of like old pop songs, you know, that, sure. um, you know, they, they weren't going to piss anybody off. Mm-mm-mm. All right, Grim. Track number six, The Denial Twist. Um, This is, I don't know if it's my favorite. This is one of my favorite songs on the album. Oh, yeah. I love I I I love the attitude that it kind of has. Yeah. And the way he sings it and the way it's played. Like, it's just kind of like, you know, it's, if you think that. It, yeah, you know, I know. It's, it's, it's funny because the piano stuff that he's playing is all wrong. so incredibly like such a basic blues it, chord progression it, it, on the piano. But it, it punches, does. Yeah, man. it does. Yeah. You know, yeah. And do the twist. Yeah. Into the dollar twist. Yes. Yeah. Um, track number seven, White Moon. Uh, really slow it down here, dude. I really love this really song. I actually here. listened to this one last night because I went outside and it was a full moon and it was a white moon too. And I had been listening to this album throughout the day, anyways, and uh, it was very fitting. It just seemed right. And again, I think very clever structure with the lyrics and how they fit together in the rhymes with this one. Really like it. I think it's a really pretty song. And have you seen that documentary that they did about when they went on this tour of Canada? Um, what's uh-uh. it called? Like um, something. Oh, something. The the Knights or whatever. Yeah. Uh, did they? Is there is there a live album? Yes, that there is. Is it? Yeah. Under the Northern Lights or I don't know. It's yeah, like yeah, something it's, like it's, that. It's something like that. Um, but dude, it's a really uh cool documentary and oh under the Great White Northern Lights. I under think. the Great White Northern okay. Yeah. I've watched um what I can watch of it, um, you know, because they don't want to give it away or whatever. 
which I, I get. Um, but I've watched yeah. what I could of it and the great performances. But, dude, they went to these like like tiny towns in like Saskatchewan and the Northwest Territories and like all Sweet. these weird spots in Canada that like, you know, pretty remote shit. But it was yeah. cool because, I mean, we're probably some of the people up there. They've never had anything like that, let alone the white stripes of oh, white stripes. Right. Yeah. But there's some there's some really good uh, live stuff. But there's also like some behind the scenes live stuff. And there's this really interesting version of White Moon that he's playing at a piano like backstage or in a lobby somewhere. And Meg is sitting at the piano and she noticeably cries while he's playing this song and you can see that he's getting somewhat emotional, emotional. too and you just wow. it kind of makes you wonder of the uh significance of that because obviously so they the, had an interesting sort of uh yeah bit. yeah relationship yeah now is the name of the documentary then is it that name of that album is that what it is the yeah i'm very white northern lights okay yeah okay because i'm looking at the track listing of the live album dude little ghost is on it Mm. Yeah. But it's from 2009, so that means the tour was from 07. So, I mean, what? Two- documentary. Yeah. Yeah, it says their 07 Canadian tour. The documentary is 2010, it says, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Okay. In support of Icky Thump. Oh, okay. Icky Thump, not this one. But I, I don't know. I just I thought that was interesting, and it's a really cool version of it. Um, very much like the recording uh, on the album, because there isn't. They leave it pretty sparse, right? But I like his piano playing. It's very simple, but it's uh, it's, it's beautiful. You know. Well, dude, you know one thing we didn't talk about actually was, I think I read that he wanted to. They wanted to record the album like live down in New Zealand. Um, and that's what they were going to re- when they were going to release the vinyl version. That's what that's what it was. So they didn't release a vinyl version. They came out with the studio version. They were going to go down to New Zealand and record um, the album live. And they were going to put that out on vinyl. Interesting. And, but the studio. But I guess the studio there, what they said, no longer had the recording equipment to make it possible. So they just didn't do it. So I don't I mean, I don't know. It seems like you could probably go to a lot of studios. I don't, I don't know. Well, my guess though is let's see you're 2005. So you've pretty much migrated at this point to a completely digital record, unless you're talking super, super high end shit that like has, you know, still yeah. the old 24, two inch, 24 track tapes and all that kind of shit. But yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe because I, I would, I would assume that they were probably pretty insistent on using that type of equipment. Yeah, I could see that. Because what was that elephant? Like they used, there was nothing they used that was like made after 1968 or something like that. When they there's some that one. some kind of kind of like rule or thing. That yeah, they, they decide they impose, which is kind of cool, man. It sort of puts you in this. It, it, yeah, it does. Bit, it does. Know? And a lot yeah. of you know, necessity becomes the mother of invention, right? So. Exactly. I, don't know. I, I think that yeah. I, I would imagine them being analog tape purists for their recording. Must be nice. Must be nice. <laughs> All right. So track number eight, your favorite. Dude, I love this song. Oh no. Actually, no, sorry, I was I was I got the title mixed up. I was thinking about the next one. Oh, Anyways, yeah. Um so Instinct Blues. Yeah. Um yeah, dude, it, this is kind of like I mean the the most blues I think we've had on the oh, album yeah, so yeah. far, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it starts off pretty quiet, but you know, it, it's weird. Like the guitar has like sort of like I was like these. I don't know the white stripes. Like they just do it. That has like the these punches. pulsating punches, right? You know. Uh, yeah. yeah. And dude, the song gets like really nasty, and it's like sort of distorted at points like mm-hmm. it's just very just dis, just dis, uh, not distorted disjointed yeah right and uh yeah man it's 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 uh it's an interesting song i really like the content of it because it's basically almost um really highlighting uh humankind's ability to make everything more difficult because he's talking about all these other animals and he's like they all get it yeah. Like, like, why don't you get it? I want you to get with it. 
<laughs> you know, but it, it's funny. It's like it just our our way of making everything more complicated. Very good at that. Yeah. Very good at that. All right. Now to your favorite track. Passive, oh, passive manipulation. manipulation, dude. Meg's vocals just, a, just crushes it. Yeah. Crushes it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, she is her own super group in the song. <laughs> I, I I can't argue with the lyrical content of the song. I mean, it's it's no. a it's an empowering song for young women. Short, sweet, yeah. To point. Don't just succumb to the wishes of your brothers. But yeah, um, yeah, killer tune. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Take, take, take. I think this is actually my favorite one. On the I think it might be. Yeah, I, I do. It might be mine too. I don't think I can uh, listen to the like, especially if I'm lids. Well, because I don't have the vinyl, but so every time I listen to it, I think I probably rewind this one like two or three times. Dude, it's so flipping good. It man. is like it's awesome it, to me. It to me it kind of has this. It's in the similar vein as like the denial twist for me. Yeah, uh, it's just kind of like got this upbeat feel. But um, uh, listening to this song in stereo. That is where it's at, man. Because I love what they do with the vocals. How he, oh yeah, vocals, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you what know, you're talking about. He, but but they're slightly they're slightly misaligned. Yeah, and there's like a li- one's just like a little off and everything. And then and, he'll let them go back and forth normal. from each yeah. other too. And dude, it's so cool, man. The way he does that. So definitely, I, I recommend anybody listening to this song. Listen to it with your earbuds or you know speakers where there's actual separation yeah. because. Dude, the, the it way it cool. kind of goes back and forth is, is pretty And it badass. does get a little disjointed and sloppy at one part. Because I remember like listening to it for the first time and I liked the song yeah. so much. And I was almost like, I get like the whole point of like it, with, with the white right? You're not trying to make a Fleetwood Mac album where like everything is so picture perfect and pristine Clean. and all that shit. Yeah. But at the same yeah. time, like... I pr- I might have given that one another run through <laughs> because the, it is kind of yeah. sloppy it, when and when it yeah, there when is it a starts point. back up at that one spot yeah 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 you're like <clears throat> uh, okay I know yeah, well, something happened here what but happened? it's still my favorite song <laughs> in the album it, dude, and it's freaking great I was gonna say I like when he does the take 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 part you'll notice take. that like he's running the vocals through higher stages of gain every time he says take so that by the time he says the third one, it's like kind of fuzzy. Oh, and I I like that. It just gets progressively like, you know, progressive, like progressive auto insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Flow. All right. Flow as ugly as I seem, uh, dude, I like this song too. Um, he again, we've talked about how his how he can change his vocals up. He's not. I don't think of him as a vocalist, mm-hmm. but the variation that he's able to give um, to fit the song and in, in the way a song feels and sounds. Um, this you know, going from a song like "Take Take Take" and then being able to 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 switch it up and, and sing it like in this song. Yeah. And grim. He's pulling out his guitar. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've always... Shit's I, about to get I really real. like the... Uh, that kind of, that open D chord with, uh, with like a kinda open D seventh. Um, but it just, I've always liked that chord because it has... Uh, you're playing some notes in there that shouldn't be in there, but it gives it a nice... Yeah, anyways. Ding, 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 ding. But I, I, I've, I've used it myself and things but i that that part i like and i like that the percussion it actually sounds like instead of bongos or something i think they're just like like just beating on the guitar uh, yeah you know what i mean du, du, du. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 i like that dude mm-hmm. all right red rain um it, i think this to me this is a very weird song um, it's very bluesy. My, yeah, very bluesy. Very bluesy. No, I didn't, oh, uh, I, one thing I was going to say, and I don't know if they're credited or if they, they credit, but um, I'm quite, quite sure that that is actually a fucking one of those kid pianos. Okay, so that's what I was gonna ask. I yeah. was like, it, it sounds it sounds like a kid piano, or but the way it also sounds is like it's like you're ringing a bell for like you know, uh, um, like service or something. Well, yeah, know? and Meg White it, is but, credited but, with bells on this, but it sounds 
it it's plunky Dude, though too. It, 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 it is. It is. I, I think you're right, man. I, I think it, it is. Sounds like, it's, like those it's kid, like a kid piano. piano. It because uh, you hear that in um, OK Go. I think they use that a little bit in this too shall pass. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Or oh shoot, you know what I'm what talking song about? Would that be yes, 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 yes. Uh, I can't think of what song it is though. No, oh. that's the song. And this too shall pass. Oh, oh, okay, oh, yeah. okay. Sorry, I was thinking of the album. Yeah, it's, that's the yeah, blue I'll color. Be, but yeah. No, no, it's not the blue color. I'll but yeah, I, I, I think um, people yeah, could definitely the music video. make yeah. those kind of okay. pianos work in certain instances. This being one of them. Because I do, yeah. I do, I think it's kind of weird how everything slows down and there's just the the really light slide, and and then the kids piano. Yeah, dude. The uh, you know there is the slide guitar and um, yeah. It it just has that kind of there is like the raw bluesy feel. Oh, and it's real it, heavy. It, it gets heavy. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the yeah, riff it, is hot. I I just thought this this song was so sort of weird. And again, this is another one where he's um. He, I think he does double his vocals and it has that sort of stereo effect. Not in the same way that he does it in yeah, um, sure. whatever, uh, the, the previous song. Take, take, uh, take. But, take, take, take. But um, but yeah, I do like it when, when he does that. All right. Last track, Lucky Number 13. You know what I do have to say, though, real quick? I was really bummed out that our format of songs, the same name, didn't take off. Thanks again. Um, because dude, Peter Gabriel also has a song called red rain and I, I listened to it and this is definitely my favorite of the two. (laughs) Okay. Just throwing that out there. Um, all right. Track number 13. I'm lonely, but I ain't that lonely yet. Oh, it's funny because mine autocorrected to say, but I ain't that money yet. (laughs) Oh no, it's not that. (laughs) No, but I ain't that lonely yet. All right. I um, this is just like your classic kind of almost like soulful gospel ish inspired. I can't say yeah, a little too basic that, for gospel, but that yeah, that sort of feel. Yeah, um, and this is, so it's interesting because I I was speaking earlier about how he plays the piano um, in some of you know in the pre, in the songs that come before this and how it's like just kind of little punches and little mm-hmm. riffs and things like that. In this song, he actually like plays the piano yeah like you know what i mean like he's actually playing it um and it's it's like flowing throughout the song yeah like um, white moon of, and, yeah instead of just being like an accent yes you know? yes 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 i agree yeah very much uh, more melodic than percussive and and there's it sounds like there's multiple pianos because there's piano parts playing over each other too at certain parts yeah there could uh, probably overdub some solos when that the high part da, 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 you, yeah, you know what yeah. i mean right um right Again, clever lyrics, because I like how he kind of sets up these scenarios that almost like talks of someone being in a desperate state. And then it kind of comes to that the line of I'm lonely, but I ain't that lonely yet. You know, like it, it, mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. It, it's clever. Yeah, I, it is. It is, dude. I like that. So, well, Graham, I think that takes us to the point where we pick our favorite and we pick our scratch. What are you going to scratch it with? My dude. Ooh, how about how about like Horn of the Devil? That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Or or what is a uh, little stick. <laughs> it's a little stick. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking uh, about. Yeah, that yeah. little stick with points. <laughs> yeah. You know you put marshmallows that on thing. it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that thing. Exactly. Um so I had a song all picked out, and I was pretty sure I was going to go with it. But as we went through, and I got to the end, I'm going to switch it up a little bit, actually. Wow, that's the, you're pulling out like well, the, I had a speech all prepared, but today I'm going to speak from the heart. I'm gonna speak from the heart, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Actually, though, I, I would say my favorite song on mm. this album, um, it, really, for me, it's it's actually it's between the Denial Twist and Take, Take, Take. Yeah. I just like... I, I like those both of those songs. The kind of the energy and the attitude that that they both have um, are, are really good. Um, uh, what's your favorite? I'm gonna say take take take. But if I was considering like you know as you consider the album, I would have made a short list of the nurse, white moon, and take take take. Mm, gotcha. Maybe red gotcha. rain. Mm, it's a really good one. Mm, that would be cool. You're All up. Right, so. 
time for me to scratch, dude. I am going to go ahead and scratch the last track on the album. I'm lonely, but I ain't that lonely yet because um, I don't feel like it, there's a lot of variety on this album, uh -huh. um, which which I like. But that song doesn't do it for me. And I think, dude, ending the album on Red Rain. Yeah, I know. I, pretty, I know that that's a solid way to go out, man. What is, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> a suitable ending, I think. Um, Good ending to the film. That's funny. Those are both Beatles references. Yeah, you ever heard that version of like the the demo version of Penny Lane from the anthology CDs? Oof. Probably have. Well, it, it ends with all those to quote it. it it's not almost like a it. back ending, like with all the sounds oh, okay. and stuff that they use oh, in the yeah. song, and then it's all like crazy. Yeah. And McCartney just goes a suitable ending, I think. Oh, okay. Right. Anyways, um, I'm gonna just go ahead. I thought for sure this was an OT kind of a day. Um, Kind of a little uh, struck that it wasn't, dude. I did consider I'm lonely, but I ain't that lonely yet. Because I do agree with the fact that you could have ended it on Red Rain. But it's just, even though it's 35 seconds, dude, yeah. I just don't like passive manipulation. It's 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 not good. <laughs> You're right. It's not. It's not. I gave it a pass. And I changed my mind last second. That was my scratch. But because it's 35 seconds, yeah. I was like, I was like, I would rather have 35 seconds of that and end on Red Rain. Okay. I, I Yeah. And it's funny because mine were switched as we've seen in our, in the past before where we're kind of debating. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's where I go. So passive manipulation. Yeah. Scratched. Scratched. Yeah. yeah, for me. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hold on. Where right. does it sit if they on the vinyl? <laughs> oh, it's right in the middle because I was like, man, I actually would scratch that. <laughs> no, I, no I, I wouldn't do that. But <laughs> No. Well, All right. <sighs> yeah, if you'd be so kind, if you dug it, like, like and subscribe, and comment, comment below. Comment below, low, low, low. And, uh, yeah. We get, be, we get behind the Dude and Grim show. <laughs> yeah, dude, get behind the Dude and Grim show, dude. Exactly. <laughs> it's time to go, y'all. Scratch Your Track is produced by the Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore. That's dot, 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 M-O-R-E. And the Tims, T-I-M-N-Z. Copyright 2022. The Dude and Grim show.